Hometown Ghost Stories contains serious and often distressing events and is not intended for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Natasha's heart was racing as she rounded the castle's corridor. She managed to escape the cell she was being held in while the screams of another girl echoed from the room over. She didn't know her way out, but it didn't matter. She had to escape. As she ran through the maze-like hallway, she heard shouting ringing out throughout the castle. She ran towards a dimly lit door, hoping it would lead to her salvation. When she was almost to it, the door swung open. A guard reached out and grabbed her by her hair. Natasha began to kick and thrust, but it was no use. A swarm of guards grabbed her and brought her to the room where the Countess stood, covered in the blood of her last victim, who still lay on the floor. I wasn't quite ready for you yet, she said with a tint of glee in her voice. The guards hung Natasha upside down and the Countess walked over to her with a knife. She began cutting and the blood began to roll down Natasha's body and drip into a pan. The Countess began to reach into the pan and smother her own skin in the blood that was collecting. Everything started to get real blurry for Natasha and the pain was starting to trickle away. As she stared in front of her one last time through blurry eyes, she swore the Countess was surrounded by hundreds of girls who had clearly been the victims of the Countess with the lust for blood that could never be clinched. I'm Rob Coakley, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories, Celebrity Hauntings, The Blood Countess. What's going on, everybody? I am your host, Rob, and welcome to another Hometown Ghost Stories Celebrity Haunting. Tonight, we are going to be covering the Blood Countess, Elizabeth Bathory. Now, we are going to be using the English pronunciation of her name, which is Elizabeth Bathory, much to the chagrin and anguish of my co-host, Jesse. Yeah, screw you, Jesse. But he'll have to deal with it. Her actual name is Bathoa Elsbit, but it's going to be a little difficult for me to keep doing, so we're going to go with Elizabeth Bathory. Now, Elizabeth Bathory was born in 1560 in Hungary. As a child, she would have recurring seizures that many believe today were the cause of epilepsy. The cure at the time was to rub the blood of a non-afflicted on the lips of the person having the seizures and also to give them a piece of somebody's skull. Many have pointed at this as the reason for Elizabeth's cruelty later in life. Fast forward to 1575 and Elizabeth would be married. Her new husband's gift to her was Setcha Castle. After 29 years of marriage, her husband would die of a mysterious illness that he was suffering with for three years. This is the time period that people would begin to whisper about the goings-on in Elizabeth's castle. You see, people were going to the castle for various reasons, and they were never returning from where they came. Around 1611, the Countess would be arrested, and the way this happened was she was hosting a party. During this party, they would bust in and lay out whatever the current day arrest warrant was, and they searched the manor. And when they searched her manor, they found two girls that they believe were the next victims of Elizabeth. They're not sure if they were going to be that night's entertainment of death to her and all of her high influential friends, or if it's something she was going to do afterwards. Now, after going through the manor, they went up to the castle. And as they went through the castle, they found dozens of dead bodies, as well as girls that were beaten to within an inch of their life. And the reason they actually finally went after her is because she had moved on to noble girls. While she was doing this with her servants and just peasants, nobody really seemed to bat an eye. While in court, she would be accused of murdering up to 650 people. Now, she had servants that were accused of being her accomplices. And in fact, Elizabeth herself would blame the servants, saying that she knew they were doing this, but she was too scared to try and stop them. Four of her servants were tortured until they confessed to helping Elizabeth murder dozens and dozens of people. Three of these servants were executed almost immediately after this confession. What happened to the fourth is a bit more unknown. The other thing during these confessions is that they would mention another servant who happened to be basically the best friend of Elizabeth. Darvulier was said to be Elizabeth's best friend, but also a witch that helped her carry out these numerous crimes. 
However, Darvulier would not go on trial because she would die before the accusations and arrest would begin. Eventually, Elizabeth would go on trial not once but twice, and she would be found guilty. As a noblewoman, she wasn't sentenced to death, however. She was sentenced to basically house arrest within her castle walls. And some say that not only was she on house arrest, but she was confined to a single room until her death. Others report that she was allowed to roam the castle freely. What we do know is that she was in this castle for the rest of her life, and she never left it again. Now, before we get into the hauntings of the place, I want to go over some of the torture methods that she was accused of using. Torture until death via heated rods. Sticking needles through the victim's lips. Biting off hunks of the person while they were still living. She would also bring them to a pond and make them walk back to the castle in the dead of winter, making them freeze to death. And one of the crazier ones is she would cover her victim in honey, allowing insects to feast on them until they died. And one of the rumors for the reason she was doing this was to steal the blood of the victim, allowing her to remain youthful. Some say she ingested it, some say she rubbed it on her skin. Either way, probably didn't work. Now let's get into some of the hauntings of the castle. In 1799, the castle would burn down, but that hasn't stopped the hauntings of the remaining ruins. And when you mix together the cruel and brutal deaths of possibly hundreds of people, we all know that that is the prime location for a haunting, even if it is just ruins at that point. Shadow figures have been seen roaming the area during the day and at night. The sounds of girls screaming and crying have also been heard around the grounds, which makes sense, as this is the area that they were tortured and murdered. And the ghost of a singular woman with a ghastly demeanor has been seen lurking around the castle's ruins. Not only does she have a sinister presence, but when you look at her face, it's blank. Many believe that this is the Countess herself. Now, when Elizabeth died, she was buried at a local church, and many people were upset about this, so her body was exhumed. The problem is, we don't know where it was reburied. So potentially, not only is Elizabeth stalking her former victims, but she's looking for her missing body. So tell me, what do you think? Do you think Elizabeth was this prolific serial killer or was she framed? Myself, Jesse and Dave are about to talk about it amongst ourselves, but I would like for you to do is to drop it in the comments or shoot us an email and let us know, do you think Elizabeth Bathory was the most prolific serial killer of all time? What's up, folks? Welcome into Hometown Ghost Stories, Celebrity Hauntings, Elizabeth Bathory, a.k.a. Erzbit Bautor, as Rub uh, refused to pronounce, but that's okay. You're not uh, even putting the names in the right order, if you're going to pronounce it that way. Bautor Erzbit, if you will, according to Wikipedia, but according to everybody else, all the professionals and the Hungarians, it's uh, Erzbit Bautor. But Can you do it with a, a Hungarian accent, though? Erzbit Bautor. I don't know so, Hungarian accents. We're so, not just Dracula. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Erzbit Bautor. There you yeah. go. Ah, ah. Yeah. Blah. It's more Transylvanian, but I guess those mm. things kind of go together, don't they? Anyways, I'm Jesse Wilkins. I am joined by Rob Coakley. Hello, Rob. So I went into my kitchen and I got my honey so that next time Dave comes mm -hmm. over, I can cover him in the honey and let him be feasted on by the insects until he dies. Next time I come over to your house? Yeah. You have like a bug infestation problem at your house, Rob? I, I'm going to cover you in the honey. You think about uh, leave you outside. Maybe you should hire like a cleaning service or something. It's disgusting. <laughs> Create a bug problem just to watch some feast on Dave. I'll do what I have to do to make this happen. It's gonna Next time Dave while. comes over my disgusting bug infested <laughs> apartment. <laughs> I hope he just lays there covered in honey for weeks. I don't know how he's going to get around that. Anyway, you guys um... have your dreams and I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome also, Dave. Hello. What's going on? Nice job on that cell phone, Rob. Mm. 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 On that cell phone? Self-own. 
cell phone. I thought he said cell phone as well. That's why I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Great cell phone, Rob. You really pulled, really pulled <laughs> that did, one off. I did yeah. just upgrade to the uh, 14 Pro Max, so thanks, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Who is phone? So let's Who jump is into phone? <laughs> Let's jump into this because this is a controversial one. Uh, Stephanie off the bat says, I'm still confused with this story. I still haven't seen anything where anyone had any real proof of her murdering anyone. So um, I thought this was the case as well um, with some of the stuff that I was researching in the beginning. But then I went through and I listened to a, a legal historian who goes through and like goes through old historical cases and she translated all of the court documents and letters and everything that was sent. And the night that they arrested her, she was throwing this party um, in her manor, which isn't the castle. It was a separate building, the manor. And they walk in to arrest her and they find two girls in there that are like already beaten. And they're pretty sure they were going to, she was going to kill them either that night or relatively soon. And then they went up to the castle and they found dozens of dead bodies that it took days to cart down from the castle to bury. So that kind of tells you. And if you look through these documents, there's no dispute that there were murders happening from anyone in the castle, but the servants were blaming Elizabeth for being the one to commit the murders and have them help her. And Elizabeth was saying, I didn't kill them. My servants killed them. I was too terrified of my servants to stop them which seems which is nonsense yeah right it seems no like chance. Not, yeah so that that's where i was like because i was coming on the show tonight to argue that she didn't do anything and then i was like oh never mind yeah because it wasn't just uh court documents and but there was there was witnesses as well so the way hmm. this worked and i'm not entirely sure if uh i mean there's a lot of contradicting facts about the story i mean it starts at the beginning it started with when she was a kid there's a going story that's in many books and many articles, many podcasts about when she was a kid. One of the first things that kind of set her off as being a twisted individual was she had witnessed a servant or, or, or something, so some sort of peasant or something, but he was getting punished to death. And the form of punishment was him being sewn into the belly of a dying horse. And basically his head was still poking out. And she was said as a kid, she was like four or five years old. She was just laughing at this gruesome scene because she thought it was hilarious. I don't know. It looked like maybe a Ace Ventura type scene with just the head popping out or whatever. But uh, I heard that was her favorite movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and that was what kind of like that was her first sighting of something twisted. And then there's other theory. But but that's widely disputed as well. It's it's read. You know, it's it's put into a bunch of books and a bunch of articles and everything. But there's no real documents to back it up so it's like is this just passed down from legend or or what mm -hmm. i do want a lot of different from... um go ahead good i was gonna say i just wanted to read pop's comment was last i heard rob's dream was bathing with ben franklin yes That's true absolutely and uh Stephanie says don't forget about the cannon size bath bombs <laughs> <laughs> yep uh well there's a lot of um things that lead up, led up to the possible reason why this person was such an insane person. Um, one of the reasons was that she was a product of incest. So she was, you know, her parents were Baron George Bathory and Baroness Anna Bathory, and they were closely related. Um, and then also she was pretty much her parents died when she was 10 and she was raised by her crazy aunt who was into witchcraft and uh, she liked to torture animals and things like that. So people um, believe that that might've had some, <clears throat> somewhat of an influence on Elizabeth when she was growing up. And then when she had married her husband, uh, Francis Nasty, he was the chief commander of the Hungarian army. And he was known for impaling and disemboweling his enemies on the battlefield. And when they were betrothed, he had, um, he was away and she had had a, an affair with some other man. And when he found out he had had the guy castrated and fed him to the dogs and Elizabeth was, apparently amused by this right so, so there's just there's also two stories of that that could be true and could lead to her sickness as well so one story is she had an affair with like a stable boy or something like that and ended up getting pregnant from that and then the other story is it may not have been a consensual situation and her um fiance came back and was angry and went off and killed him i think either way if you're of a lower standard and you were sleeping with someone of nobility at the time, then that was going to be the punishment, whether or not it was consensual. But obviously if it was not 
a consensual situation and that turns into obviously that could lead to um mental issues down the line as well obviously that's just a traumatic event so especially because she was a kid at the time i think she was like 14 years old or something so all these things could lead to her going down this path of starting to become kind of, uh, become kind of crazy and um sadistic if you will and she obviously if these stories are true she became quite a twisted individual and you yep. mix that in with like the epilepsy that she was experiencing as a child with the with the seizures and mm -hmm. like you're just mixing a bunch of different things that could... right there was yeah you're right the seizures and migraines and there was no fix for this at the time like they were well there was well the, their fix for your migraine was they would i think it was a, a hanging rope and they would rest it on top of your head and they believe that that would cure you no so they also drill medicine. holes in your head yeah but this one specifically in their culture was to um take the blood from a person that wasn't afflicted with it and have put their blood in your mouth and then just randomly hand you a piece of skull for some reason so okay all three of those things sound like they definitely won't work for a migraine so <laughs> it's i'm it's willing clear to try then. them i'm willing to try them the next time i get one yeah I wonder uh, if they hand you a piece of your own skull because I know in certain cultures they would fix migraines and or you know quote unquote fix migraines and things like that by actually drilling holes into the skull. Yeah, well, from what I was reading, it's somebody else's skull, but I didn't say if it was like a living. I'm assuming a dead person, most likely, but who knows? Yeah, maybe they maybe it's the guy they sewed into the horse. They're like, he doesn't need this part of his skull anymore. He's going to that horse. So people yeah. try to deb debunk the horse thing because obviously horses at that time were unbelievably expensive and they wouldn't just use it as an execution tactic. But in other versions of the story that I've read, uh, it was a dying horse anyways. So they were like, well, might as well use it. I thought you were just going to use one of our old jokes just to make the three of us laugh. And you were going to say that horses were extinct at that point. <laughs> I don't remember which joke that is, but... <laughs> Nevertheless, we can still try it out. There was the, the these are not facts. Remember, we used to make the these are not facts, and oh, one yeah. of them, one of them was that horses were extinct from like 1910 to 1935. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even make sense at all. <laughs> None of those did, though. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Stephanie brings up that at that point, if she was 14 years old, she was practically middle aged considering <laughs> the times. Yeah. yeah, not that it makes any better. That's right, but um, yeah much yeah. much different time period and that's why the incest isn't as like a big a deal in that time frame as well right because well that was like that was to preserve like the family tree and the nobility and everything right. everything about the story is very game of thrones ish uh, you notice yeah. a lot of uh a lot of the kills and everything like that like for instance there was a rebellion and her husband or fiance at the time you know this guy's a warlord or whatever and when they basically squashed this rebellion, they took the the leader of the rebellion and his punishment was to wear like a burning crown and they sat him on this iron throne and just kept shoveling coals underneath the iron throne and, you know, just heating it up and burning him alive. And then it didn't stop there. When he was dead, they cut off pieces of his flesh and fed it to his soldiers. So pretty, uh, pretty brutal. But you get the crown of gold from Game of Thrones there, a little reference with that. So I, I I feel like George R. R. Martin kind of went through some of these stories and got some ideas because some of these uh, some of these killings at that time were were quite brutal. People people are just the worst, right? We just find the worst things to do to people mm -hmm. and do them, and just yeah. like yeah, let's do it. It's bonkers. yeah, we kind of we kind of talked about this in the um, Port Royal episode. It was like how the heck they came to that idea of keel hauling. Must yeah. have been like so much trial and error. It was yeah. like, well, this is bad, but this is worse. <laughs> Died too fast, went to shock too fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like one of the other methods that they used was um, the paper between on, the toes. There was that was one of them. Yeah, they would light that on fire, and then um, I think it was called like the wheel. They would give them the wheel, mm -hmm. which basically was they would hold you down, and with a mallet they would break literally every single bone in your body, and then put you on the wheel and stretch you out or something. I don't remember. I don't know if they like roll you around on a wheel or something, but the the more terrifying part of that execution tactic was uh was just breaking every single bone here's a floppy mess and then they break every single bone in your body and then they turn you into the wheel of a 1991 toyota camry and that's your punishment for the rest of your life that's how they started out mm -hmm. yeah toyota and, camry part's the worst part or maybe like a 96 honda civic you know and then you pull up to me at a freaking gas station and say 
did you buy the V6 or the V8 for your car? And when I say V6, you say, should have got the V8. It's like, sir, you're driving a 96 Honda Civic. Why are you telling me what I should have bought for my car? Yeah, uh, bro dad used to get that all the time because he has a uh, an old Mustang. I think it's a 69. Mm-hmm. And uh, people would like shame it for not being standard transmission or manual. So he converted it. And it's like still like like you pulled up in your pile of crap car. And you have the <laughs> nerve to like talk trash about this beautiful classic car that he restored <laughs> by hand, like every. Year. Hand. I mean, who are you? Like yeah, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll no, up the next one. No, Papa Squash. This is this happened to me twice at a gas station, both times by like ninety seven and ninety eight Honda Civics. I, I have a Dodge Challenger. It's just a regular Dodge Challenger. It's nothing it's not special. Regular. It's not regular. It is special because your license plate says Vin Diesel on it. That's true. It does say yeah. Vin Diesel. It's special because but... it's missing two cylinders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but they literally, have, they pull up to be like, nice car. And we all know how I like to interact with the general public. So I would just go, thanks. And then they'd be like, V6 or V8? I'd say V6. They'd be like, should have got the V8. You like, should just just forget about that. All that. Just tell them V12 from now on and have their minds be blown. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. so back to. I, back I to, think Dodge does make a V12, but we'll, well, this is not a cop podcast. We'll just it is not. Thank God, because they would have ended up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm bored, ready to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving on to uh, Erzbit Bertor. <laughs> the, uh, although I'm kind of glad that you didn't. That, that is exactly how the Honda Civic sounded. Because <laughs> it no, if, I'm kind of glad you didn't. Because honestly, by like the fifth time that you, uh, you and me both butchered it, I'd be like, oh god, I wish you just said Elizabeth Bathory the whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so it's it's pretty obvious that if these things are all true, then she would have been a pretty messed up individual. It still doesn't make excuses for her being a psychotic killer. They say that one of the things you know they call her the Blood Countess. They say she could have been a vampire, but it was basically like the first time that she had accidentally got some blood on herself uh, while beating a, one of her servants. She kind of smeared it around and she noticed it was giving her like a nice like tone, almost like a fake tanner. Mm-hmm. And then that's where I think it started, where she kept spreading it around. She's like, ooh, this, this actually makes me look young. And then this is kind of where the theory is that she was bathing in the blood of her victims, like literally filling up bathtubs. Now to fill up a bathtub with human blood, it's a whole bunch of bodies. Like one body isn't going to fill up a bathtub. So for her to do this, I don't know if it was completely full, but it would have had to be, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so. I'm just guessing right now, but it's it's it would have been quite a few bodies to fill up a bathtub. So I, I find that story to probably be just kind of spicing it up after the fact. But well, the other problem with that too is that none of this, none of these were documented until a hundred years after she was dead. So any of the blood stuff didn't, nothing was written at the time of her being alive. This was all po- like very far post death. So it feels like somebody was going in to add to the story. Yep. Squatch says maybe it was a small bathtub. That's possible. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Dave says. Yeah. Uh, to go back to it, it, I don't know if she ever actually stood trial. I know her witnesses or people that confessed against her stood trial, but I think because she was of noble birth at that time, nobility didn't stand trial and hey did you uh did you listen to my opening yeah i'm here to tell you that i'm pretty sure it's wrong she stood trial twice but thanks for listening pretty sure she did. She wasn't i think she's she didn't she wasn't present for her trial what he she did, wasn't she they wasn't bricked her into her right yeah. that's what i'm saying is, is that that people went there so here's the thing with nobility at the time and it would have set a precedent this is why the king decided not to have her stand in court and stand trial was if they tried her, then people of noble birth and kings and queens could also stand trial for their crimes. And so because of that, they just boarded her up in her room forever and just let her die there. And the people that were her accomplices and witnesses did stand trial and they convicted some of her accomplices of helping out with the crimes and everything. And I guess her main accomplice had died before the trial happened or something. So they never actual actually able to get, um, get a confession out of her. Yeah, that was, uh, Anna de Vullier. but um, they uh, I forget where I was going with that. They they also she was also really good friends with the prime minister. The king wanted her to be found guilty. The king owed her seventeen million dollars. 
Yeah, she right. had she had more money than the king. He was legitimately borrowing money from her. That's how rich yeah. these people were. She was financing the war for the king, and basically, when this popped up, he was like, "Oh, good, this is a way for me to get out of paying her." But because she had so many friends like that of high ranking nobility, she was able to like have happen what ha what happened where she didn't actually get like. Um, executed and all that stuff and lose all of her land and the family was able to keep everything because of everyone that she knew and they were calling in favors yeah to... i think that's yeah that's that's obviously where like the main conspiracy comes from it's like well maybe she didn't do this and it was just the king trying to get out of paying his bills it's obviously a nice coincidence that it could he... have been both this is a situation where the two things don't have to be mutually exclusive right she might have been killing her servants she probably was mm -hmm. um with the the thing is, is it wasn't actually illegal for royalty or for uh, wealthy families to murder their servants back then or, or peasants. The problem became when she started abducting members of other families and murdering them after her husband died. She kind of lost her mind. Um, but yeah, it escalated because she was they were running out of regular servants. So, so it was like the, the peasants. This, she was abducting so many of them or bringing so many of them to the castle and they they couldn't say no. So at the time, the laws were if you were a peasant because there was a revolution and they changed the laws. So it was basically before you were just a poor person, whatever. But then after a revolution happened, they changed the laws and they became actual peasants. And these peasants had to serve at least one day a week, one day a week to um, the no, the nobles or whatever, the uh, lords and ladies of, of the land. And one of those things would be maybe you have to go to the castle. So she was snatching up you know, girls to come and her favorite was, you know, it was like between like the ages of like 12 and 16 or whatever. But these were the girls that she was particularly bringing in to kill inside of the castle. And once they started running out of them or people started catching on, like, no, 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 I've, no, we don't, she's not home today. You know, they started catching on that these girls were never coming back. She made the mistake of starting to hand select and kill people that were of higher standards. So like rich people's kids and everything. And this is what, this is what was her downfall. Yeah, there was whispers of what was going on at the castle long before her husband died. So like they they there was word getting around, but nothing could be done, like you said about it. And once she starts going after the noble girls, they're like, okay, well, now we kind of have to do something. Mm -hmm. I believe it was her own cousin who basically they had brought him back and he kind of had a general idea of what was going on, but he was turning a blind eye and he was going off um to do business elsewhere but eventually they brought him back in his name was also Hyorhi, uh and they brought him in to go investigate and eventually he came in and he saw basically violent acts happening you know caught them red-handed quite literally and couldn't ignore it anymore so that's when um that's when it all came crumbling down yeah so the the interesting part about elizabeth as well we'll get into the ghost in a little bit um what they what the historian that I was listening to found interesting was that she wrote a lot of letters to, like to her husband and her kids, like talking about the things she was worried about, worried about their health and stuff like that. But she also was a big philanthropist and did a lot of like really good things for like people that weren't as well off as her. Like she, she got somebody's husband back that got captured in a war by starting like a letter writing campaign and stuff like that. So she was also extremely intelligent. I don't know if you mentioned this in the episode, but she was unbelievably smart at this time in history. It wasn't really taboo for women to be educated. Obviously that changed again, but there was a certain period of time where obviously they're like, no, women can't learn anything. They're just supposed to be in the house. And then at this period of time, it was like, it was actually for noble girls. It was like a good you know um it wasn't frowned upon for women to be educated and then it kind of went back to square one and then obviously everything's good now but they um she could speak like five or six different languages she was able to read and write not only in her language but greek uh a few different languages and also slavic which was the language of the servants which obviously played a key role in her being able to manipulate them to do what uh, she wanted to do matthew thomas says um writing letter campaigns were the hashtags of their time and they were that's literally what it was like that's how you um that's how you got like things done back then yeah that's how they knew enough people were pissed off about something if they just kept getting letters right um let's talk about some of these torture methods that she supposedly <laughs> went through with 
Now the honey covering somebody with honey, again, just like, how is that what you came up with? How do you come up with spreading honey over somebody and just be like, eh, just let the bugs eat them till they're dead? I think that one's a little bit easier to get to. It's the ones that are more complex. Like, you know, it's like, oh, let's break all their limbs and put them in a wheel. That way when the wheel ro rolls, they won't be able to, you know, put pressure on these on these broken parts. So like that's more of like a complex one for me that that is, is more like how do, how do you get there? But like Dave is like, pro honey death from what I can tell. Yeah, there was time. that one. There was also like ones where they would bring them outside and basically just keep dousing them in water and then uh, they would freeze and they would just leave them there to die. Yeah, in the winter and she would bring them to the pond near the castle and like make them swim in the water and walk back to the castle and by the time they got to the castle they would usually drop dead yeah there was also another time where she was suffering from a massive migraine and she's like bring me a servant and they brought her a servant and she just started eating her she just like took bites out of her and uh that one was actually written in i think one of the letters um that was brought, i'm not sure if that was brought up in trial or not but that one was one of the written accounts was that she just basically started biting chunks out of this poor girl yeah and which is Okay, like <laughs> what? So they say that this was like kind of a the other, the other servants like, damn, I forgot it was dinner time. We should have brought a dinner instead. Yeah. yeah, they said this was kind of a stress reliever for her. Like if she was having a bad day, like she would just. <sighs> How do I get rid of this stress? I guess I got to go murder another servant tonight. And yeah. that's how she would like unwind, which is crazy. Like yeah. that, that's your way of unwinding. So the, the numbers seem inflated, but the, it's anywhere between 60 and what, 600? That's kind of yeah, up to 650. Um, the servants that all confessed, their number were somewhere between 30 and 50 that were killed or murdered on the property by her. <laughs> Papa Squatch said, did she eat a honey covered servant? And my first <laughs> reaction is, oh, that sounds tasty. But no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew T asked if she was related to Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean. Seems like it, right? Yeah. So, and like, as I was thinking about it, I don't think it's 650 because the 650 number, did you guys see where that came from? No. So, so basically during the trial, since there was a trial, there was a little girl that was watching it and she was really enamored with it and she wanted to be part of the trial. So she had relayed some information that she had heard, quote unquote, which was there was a diary from Elizabeth that said that she, that said how many she killed and had the name of every victim written in it. Now they never found the diary. There, no one else knew anything about this diary. And it seems like it was a made up thing because somebody wanted to be part of the story basically. Yeah. I think that the uh, 650. So I think this one lands somewhere probably in the middle. Like she was probably killing people and but it probably wasn't that many and maybe she wasn't necessarily bathing in their blood but it's probably somewhere in between that's what i would guess i wouldn't be shocked if she was using the the blood as like a toner i mean that's not even that's not even a thing that was rare i you, even to take it back not to bring this down even darker and deeper than it is but in the holocaust when they were checking um people to see if they were uh healthy enough to continue working in the concentration camps what the women would do is they would prick their finger and they would take some of the blood and rub their blood, rub the blood on their face to make their cheeks look rosy and make their face look a little more healthy. And so you think of this kind of almost like the same thing where she's rubbing the blood on her skin to make herself look younger or healthier or whatever. It's kind of the well, same. This was, idea. But this was also you know, during a time where these where they would powder their faces to be completely white because that was the idea the idea of beauty back then. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So that would yeah. be contrary. I, I don't think. know. Yeah, I don't know, but it just seemed to came across my mind as something that's sort of similar so mm. when, when the servants are saying that it was like 30 to 50 my mind goes to they're downplaying it right so i do think it's probably more uh um, well the other thing to think of is like how long did she have each servant for and was these servants only there for a small portion of time or if she was mm -hmm. killing people for two or three decades you know then she wouldn't have you know these servants probably weren't there for that entire duration of time uh, Papa Squatch saying Alta just joined the chat made me laugh. Yep. <laughs> me and Dave having a deep, uh, yeah. a deep foundation in Twitter conversation, <laughs> really gripping for the paranormal uh, enthusiasts. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Matthew says three twenty-five in the middle. So th th what's wild about this is we're talking about 
or you know, potentially the most prolific serial killer of all time. And in the yep. middle is around 325. And that number is in, in, insane. It's yep. insanely high. And to even say like, well, maybe it wasn't just 600. That's such a high number for one person to commit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the next biggest one is um, what a serial killer in Brazil. I mean, like where, where would she, she would rank as the number one easily, easily. Yeah. Yeah. She's so she's well, in the Guinness. Point does being a serial killer just um, become just genocide? You know, like where does that one Ooh, turn into the other? That's a that's good, good question. question yeah. You know, oh. she's in the Guinness book of world records as the most prolific. And I kind of have an issue with that based on the fact that like, we don't have a full accounting or even or anywhere close to it right because right. we're saying it could be between 30 to 650 and that spread 30 is awful like 30 30, 30, 30 is still lands you at the top of the list of all time i think as well <laughs> 30 is a lot right like that's a ton but like there's like not enough evidence to say 650. So how, so I'm just going to start s sending stuff to the Guinness book of world records and be like, yeah, I did this the most, like you can't prove I didn't like is basically what they're saying. You know, it's yeah. almost uh that old SNL skit. Did you ever see the Chris Farley one where he wrote a book about like a book of world records? And like, one of them was like, uh, <laughs> he's like most bats seen at night. <laughs> Two. <laughs> i do remember that one that was good yeah was uh, a, just pulling a up a list from from wikipedia um a lot of stuff in like central america but it, it looks like the closest one would be 193 she doesn't even make this list so i don't know if it's because it's not like proven proven mm -hmm. but his possible it's victims like are over 300 193 for luis uh garavito and then pedro lopez had 110 possible is oh, plus 300 as well I've never wow. heard of any of these people. Another one's in Pakistan, Javed Iqbal with a hundred. Those are some sick. I didn't even know there was this this list is crazy. But it's Wikipedia, so you don't know what's uh what's crazy. Another one is a Russian guy who is known as the werewolf who killed 78 from 1992 to 2010. That wasn't that long ago. Nikolai Popkov. Hmm. Ah, at the start of serial killer podcast. All of these just completely intrigued me. I'm like, I must read into it. So <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. But yeah, there's some serious ones. Yeah, yeah maybe about the first ever serial killer podcast. No one has done it. No one's done it. I mean, <laughs> we're full of good ideas. It's so original. <laughs> we're the first paranormal podcast, and now we'll be the first serial killer podcast. I mean, mankind is just now starting to get into true crime. They've yep. never been into it before, right? Like that's uh it's one of my favorite things when the news mm -hmm. brings up like, why are people so interested in true crime now? It's like you read the newspapers when Jack the Ripper was around. Like th yeah. this has been humankind has been into this stuff since the dawn of time. They want to know about all of this. Like they always want to know. It's it's always a thing. It's been always oh, it's been a thing. It's scary. You know. I yeah. do want to bring up that uh, earlier in the chat. Casher called me fat, and I don't appreciate that. If uh, one of you guys could go in and just remove the link to his album from uh, from Nightbot, <laughs> <laughs> why are we still promoting this? Anyways, he's mean. <laughs> shout out, shout out nice. to Casher. His uh, his daughter is doing a fundraiser for their cheerleading squad today, and I sent their cheerleading squad a Venmo request for a thousand dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to Florida in a while. I'd like to go. <laughs> yeah, figured they had a few bucks to spare. Yeah. All right. So the plan is to hack into the cheerleading fund and we'll divide that money up <laughs> with our patrons. So if you guys haven't already just joined the Patreon and we'll split that up. Yeah, let's do it. But the, right. the catch is we have to also learn a cheerleading routine when we get to Florida <laughs> and we have to perform. It's going to be tough. Well, at least we know how to do the makeup. Yep. That's right. We got yeah. that down. We got yeah. that all ironed yeah. out. We were just going to bathe in blood and then we're ready to rock. <laughs> <laughs> Most horrifying thing these cheerleaders have ever seen. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just, we just three show grown men to come <laughs> up with pom poms all dripping in blood. We're like, hey, we're ready. <laughs> we took all the money. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, that Chuck, that, well. that was our worst joke of all time on the show. We're moving on. <laughs> All this right. is one of those ones where if we weren't recording live, we probably would have edited that out. <laughs> I don't Papa think Squat, so. Papa Squat says we would be cheerleading in pirate costumes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. So we should probably get into a little bit of the ghost stories. Um, 
unfortunately the castle burnt down and you saw some of the remnants in the episode if you're watching just real quick everyone wants the pirate costumes so we might as well throw them on this is a little mm -hmm. preview of what you'll get just also picture us dripping in blood with pom-poms yeah there we go rob nice job <laughs> i'm doing the pom-pom dance you got to stop that we're moving on <laughs> Okay, so the the castle unfortunately burnt down in the 1700s. Um, there are remnants of it still, and supposedly there are ghosts that are spotted throughout the the um, remains of the castle. Well, there's got to be. If there were 650 people killed there, mm -hmm. you know, there's got to be some residual hauntings. Yeah, this it is could be any one of them. True. This is also uh, one of the. Um, the uh, possible origins of the Bloody Mary legend as well. Mm. So there's because there was when they confined her to the room. One of the one of the stories that they actually bricked her into a room. Yep. And on the other side of the bricks, there was a mirror that you could sometimes see her in. So that was I read one of those. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, and of all the hauntings, I do have a problem with one of them, and it's where they're saying that like this sinister woman shows up and like she has like this evil aura around her which is fine like i i get that part but then they say that she is faceless but they're claiming it's elizabeth and i'm like mm, that yeah, feels you know? that feels like a stretch like how are you getting there is kind of yeah. my thing isn't it more likely that it could have been one of the 650 women she killed in the right. castle right I guess because of like the demeanor or like the the feeling you get when she's around, maybe that's why they're saying it. Well, I also but, find it highly likely that she is haunting the castle. I mean, oh yeah, she I never left. She that. committed so many horrible acts there, and she was confined there to die. It's almost like a prison cell. So the going story is that, and you said it in the episode, and you just said it a minute ago, is is basically they they walled her into her bedroom, and they had created like a slit in the door, and they would or a slot in the door and they, they would just give her food and that was it. And she just stayed there until she died. Yeah. So I, I'm not, I'm not saying that she's not haunting the area, but my whole thing is like, if we don't see a face, like I just, I hate when we're just tying identities to things when it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I've mentioned it many times on the show. So, but I fully believe that she is one of the ones that are haunting the, uh, the show. Not the show. Sorry, the the place. <laughs> She's probably haunting the show now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. She was haunt. I think she was haunting me last <clears throat> night. I don't think she wanted this episode to come out. I was also so eagle eye viewers might realize that I am wearing the same thing that I was wearing in the pre produced section. No, nobody cares. I promise. Well, that's <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> am I am I offended? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> it's because the episode got finished like 10 minutes before we went live, <laughs> basically. Because I uh, I got violently sick last night and couldn't record. Yeah, Rachel brings up a good point. She said, even if uh, she didn't murder anyone, if someone walled me into a room, I'd haunt there. Yeah, so it, it, yeah. That and she died there. You know, both of those things could uh, account to her. Her shopping bag, hometown laundry day. Matthew T says, Rob, take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that is a great point. Even if she wasn't walled in, too. Even if she was just, like, confined to the castle for four years and was never allowed to leave. Like, we had that story in Juni. I mean, the woman was in that house a lot longer than four years. But when you're just so, like, attached to a location, you're most likely going if, to haunt if it if you're going to yeah, haunt anything. If you're going to haunt anywhere, it would be there. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool looking location. It's a place I'd like to, to go see at some point. I, I'm guessing we never get there, you know, uh, just based on where oh, it is. Attitude. Yeah. Well, we need more patrons basically. Yep. <laughs> so hungry. Start telling your friends what you want for Christmas is for them to become a patron of hometown ghost stories. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. And that's what I want. That's, that's true. Right. Lots of benefits to being a patron. And we do appreciate all you guys that have signed up already. Um, yeah. So I, I would lead on the side of, uh, yeah. How could this place not be haunted? How could this location not be haunted? It's sad that the castle is not what it used to be, but what can you expect after like 700 years and burning down? Yeah. It's that'll do it too. 
that's it's a little tough for it and that's like the the sad part like if this castle was still like intact can you imagine like the things that would be going on inside specifically the room that the basement area or wherever she was doing a lot of the murders and also where she was supposedly like walled into it would uh it would be one of the scariest places on earth most likely like it, yeah they had apparently they had a torture room i don't even know if we mentioned it but her and her i think we did mention it but her and her husband like they were like torture buddies like mm-hmm. he would like teach her new ways to torture that he learned in war and they would just whenever he was back around which was very very um few and far between like he would come home for christmas he'd come home for easter and he would just pop in from time to time but most of the most of the time he was like devoted to his craft he was off to war battling torturing people but when he was around she's like oh i think i'd like to torture a servant tonight he'd be like oh well let me show you some new tricks that i learned on the battlefield and that was kind of their thing i kept the relationship spicy you know I think I people are always looking for different ways to like spice their relationship up. This is a pretty good one. Kate, Kate says torture besties. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe how many couples like this find each other. Stephanie says they should they would throw some hell of a Halloween parties. <laughs> there, there's so many couples throughout history that you find that are like psychopathic that will like murder together. I wonder if it was if it was that or if it was more of she was a young, uh, malleable person who was you know had some psychological issues to begin with and then he introduced her to these torture methods and then he kind of almost created her you know what i I mean that is essentially what happened with frank and rose west um same exact thing she was already like on that train that guy was already killing a bunch of people he introduced her to it and then everyone said she was the more sadistic of the two yeah like Mm -hmm. to the point that she wanted to kill all the time and he was like i can't keep doing this for the most part um yeah if you haven't if you haven't heard the story of frank and rose west it's it's brutal and disturbing is that the ken and barbie killers in canada in the 90s that stephanie's talking about uh nope those are another one though frank and rose west were in england ah gotcha yeah could you do uh, an accent to just best describe how they would talk to each other nope oh maybe we should go kill some people today well what do you think <laughs> maybe a little like that you want to give oh, it a yeah. shot yeah a little bit of a go can you at least say urs bit correctly no i said it correctly all right just give me one here he no just give me one here he all stop right, with the finger stop know, with the it's fingers not, it's, not it's not italy and i still do it this is just when i'm saying things that have an accent anyways yes right. <laughs> kate says bloody hell bloody hell <laughs> and, and frank and rose west were real cockney accents too they were like you know do it do it they were basically brad pitt from um oh my that god that wasn't that was not that a cockney me. accent you're talking about snatch yeah yeah that was a pikey accent yeah whatever you know what i mean they're just like it was just almost like stupid like peaky like, blinders right yeah like peaky That's blinders cockney, cockney would be yeah like the um the poltergeist the enfield poltergeist tapes that was all cockney yeah but was peaky blinders also cockney i said that afraid that they was gonna yell about arthur it. arthur had a cockney accent okay but that's it so not completely wrong good yeah. papa squatch says not enough killing lately isn't it <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh it's at this point of the show that we should probably end it uh anything else on this one <laughs> Um, I just like that every time you do an English accent, it's it's a young girl. And she goes, no, every time he does it, it goes up one off. Yeah, it keeps going does. higher and higher. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, it's clearly has to be if any location on, on the earth is haunted, something like this is going to be haunted, right? If 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 25% of what they said happened there, happened there. It's one of the craziest even places if, ever. if one of those things happened it's completely possible that it's it's right. haunted if not it could be haunted for other reasons so i i i lean on the uh almost positively whatever is left of this place is haunted the yeah. footage that you used was that actually of the castle's ruins or was that just other ruins the opening story is not but the part in the yeah middle that's what is, I figured the case yeah. was yes okay so those of you who haven't uh who are listening swing on over to youtube and um just search hometown ghost stories will pop up. Check out the videos that we do into the stuff. We put in a lot of work and um, you can see some of these locations, you know, put a picture to, uh, to what we're talking about here. 
Yeah. Anything else you guys want to hit on here? I think it should pretty much do it. We'll be back on Tuesday. Dave, what are we covering Tuesday? Tuesday, we are covering the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, among a couple other locations. They have some catacombs over there, too, or what they refer to as catacombs. So some interesting stuff going on in Arkansas at the most haunted hotel in America. Eureka is such a <laughs> Jesus Christ. How many most haunted hotels in America can we cover? <laughs> Eureka is such a fun word. Um, it is to say. I enjoy it. Eureka. Hmm. Hit it with a Hungarian accent. Eureka. The fucking fingers again. I'm so <laughs> sick of it. I feel like you were about to try it, and now I just ruined it. You did actually. I was gonna go for it, and uh, yeah. now you have to oh. wait another year. Before I try an accent again, uh, I ruined it. I ruined it. Mm, yeah. Anyways, uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging out on this Black Friday. Hopefully, you got some, uh, maybe you got some shopping done. Me, not so much, but maybe wait for Cyber Monday. Anyways, that was your uh, portion of the show that was shopping tips with Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> we, got sh- we got shopping tips. We got makeup yeah. tips today. It's going what's well. next? Uh, what's the next horror movie that people should be catching up on to, to keep up with us? Be VHS 99. And then, That'll be the next one to drop, and then after that, we're going to cover Pet um, Cemetery. Yeah, both Pet Cemeteries. The Pet Cemetery, and after that, we're doing all three Black Christmas movies. If you want to get a head start, so that's uh, that should take us through the year, which is crazy to say, mm. or I close to it. They'd have mm-hmm. a fast. Kate, Kate recommended The Ring. I would love to cover The Ring. Oh, everyone yeah. watched The Ring. Look at that. The yeah, ring. Huh. we'll do The Ring. Well, that'll be after. We have mm-hmm. so many movies to cover still. We do. Yeah. We do. And this content. I want to go see the uh, movie Bones and All that just came out too. So Yeah, that, yeah, looks, that looks interesting. Yeah, I'll send you guys a link. I have it. But maybe, uh, real oh, good. Maybe we'll do like a bonus Patreon episode if we go and watch that or something. Because yeah. we have so much time to go to the movies right now. We yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, we just locked down our next live investigation location. So we'll keep you guys posted on that. But We'll be doing that next Sunday, which is very exciting. So uh, let's give a quick shout out to our patrons. Jeannie R, Jimmy H, Justin T, Lisa J, Mallory K, Mike, uh, sorry, Mike B, Mom and Pops W, Stephen V, and Demon King. Those are our VIPs. Thank you guys so much for being VIPs. You are absolute legends, and we appreciate you so much. Uh, Moving on, we also have Jimmy V. I'm sorry, Jake V. Stephanie A, Sydney B, Anthony Angry, Dave Rocks T, Brandon W, Captain McSlugs, Cody G, Kira Lee J, Mark M, Matthew T, Mariah M, Papa Squatch, Rachel B, Sarah, Dave Loves Bacon R, Sarah W, Soph M, and Hooper. Thank you guys so much. If you are interested in getting your name on this prestigious list, $3 a month can get you on the list. For more money, you get more bonus content and more perks and fun stuff. We have a brand new line of stickers coming out, which is pretty exciting. So this is these are little... Um, circular like coaster size stickers that uh are themed off of different locations that we've covered so your favorite episodes will have a nice little custom picture of it with the uh, name of the location little hometown ghost stories logo uh they have been printed already and we'll have images up um for you on tuesday for that and if you're interested in getting some of those we will put out some details and we'll send some out especially to the vips and everything so new stickers new stuff is more fun lots of fun and you guys have earned it and you deserve it. So uh, Squatch says, I need some new stickers for my office door. These will definitely be them. So I will get a list of locations that we have stickers on. I know we have like just some of the heavy hitters, Amityville, Conjuring House, uh, Oliver House, some of our some of our best episodes. We basically went through some of the top ones and and covered those. So and, and not to keep selling our patron, but um, we did a we did a hangout with ten dollar and up tiers on Tuesday. And I played them a recording from when myself and you did an investigation in the old Bridgewater house that we've never shared publicly with anybody else. So like the only people that have heard it is basically us and the people at that live hangout. So, you know, like not saying that's going to happen every time, but that's something that, you know, we don't even know if we're going to ever share that anywhere else ever. Yeah, so that's some of the exclusive stuff that you guys got. Um, let me just pull that screen. <laughs> Excuse me, that um, bitch back up. If you guys haven't already, check out Casher's new album, House of Roses 2. He's a regular contributor to the show. Uh, also called me fat today, so I can't even believe I'm saying this, but uh, his album is now on Spotify, so go check that out. It's a very good album. 
Uh, Love yes, that. Yeah, Kate, that was with one of the flashlight ones. So, uh, yeah, so that's all That's all the stuff that we have going on. We have the location lockdown. We have, we were, we were going to slow down in October. Remember, we were like, ah, oh, we just got to get through October and we're going to slow down a little bit. Nope, Guess what? Didn't happen. Guess yep, what? Here we go. Not not slowing down, but it's fun. I love yeah. doing this stuff, so it's okay. It's okay. Anyways, I think that'll do it. Anything else, gentlemen? That's it for me. All right. We'll see you guys on Tuesday for another live episode. Be there 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we are every single week. We'll see you later. Peace. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Wilkins here, Hometown Ghost Stories. Hope you enjoyed that episode. For more bonus side content episodes, swing on over to Patreon. Get early access to this stuff as well as some Patreon-exclusive stuff. For as little as $3 a month, you can join on Patreon and help support the crew. We put a lot of money, effort, resources into these videos, and every little dollar helps. So consider it. Also, uh, swing on over to the Discord. On the Discord, you can get access to us. You can contact us. You can share your stories, share your ghost pictures. Uh, it's just a better way to contact us. So swing on over to Discord. The link is below. It is free to join, completely free. Also, here are some other episodes that you can check out. Boom. Boom. Check out those videos. Really cool stuff. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>